أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله تعالى in this beautiful word you say يا أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعرفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم O mankind we have created you from a male and female and we have made you into nations and tribes so you get to know one another. Then Allah says, Verily, the most worthy of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has more taqwa, righteousness of the heart, piety of the heart, sincerity of the heart. Allah will compare you not by your good looks, not by your richness, not by your nobility or pedigree or ancestry, not by your positions, but He will compare you with the taqwa by your hearts. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah la yanduri la suwarikum, walakin yanduri la kulubikum, wa kana yashiri la qalbihi, wa kala taqwa ha huna, a taqwa ha huna, a taqwa ha huna, hadith in Sahih Bukhari, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily Allah does not look at your good looks, and the way you are shaped, but he looks towards your heart. And he was pointing to his heart, and he placed his hand on his heart, and he mentioned three times with emphasis, this is the place of taqwa. This is the place of taqwa. This is the place of taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He evaluates the people, He will not evaluate with wealth and who is more handsome and who is more popular, who is more famous, who is more educated. He will evaluate with taqwa. As Allah says, In akramakum in the law at kakum. The most worthy of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has more taqwa. So, a gathering of Muslims, this religion, started off very small and it spread and it will continue to spread and it will grow and as you notice those who live in the new york area they have seen from the last 30 40 years those who live here for so long when we only have few masjid starting from basements and then from the basement it grows to buildings and to big mosques and there are so many mosques in the new york area in the metropolitan area hundreds of mosques, including Queens and Brooklyn and Staten Island and Long Island and all the neighboring areas in Manhattan, lots of masjid all around. But today, Muslims don't have any excuse. Within a few blocks, there's always a masjid. And still there are people who are still building masjid and opening masjid, large masjid that accommodate the large population of Muslims. So Islam is growing. And Alhamdulillah, this is from the Ni'matullah. But O Muslims, take warning. Do not believe that because you enter into this religion that you are doing Allah a favor. No, you're not doing Allah a favor. You're not doing me a favor. You're not doing the Imam a favor. You're not doing the Muslims a favor. When you enter in the fold of Islam, it is Allah who has done you a favor by guiding you to this religion. The only desert Arabs, when they accepted Islam, they believe that they have done Muhammad a favor. So Allah replied to them in the Quran, from the Quran, يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا قُلْ لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيْهِ إِسْلَامَكُمْ بَلِ اللَّهُ يَمُنُّوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِمَانِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ they consider the Islam a favor unto you, O Muhammad. Tell them, no. It is Allah. It is Allah who has done them a favor by guiding them to Islam if they truly believe. So do not believe that you are doing anyone a favor. So this is a reply from Allah directly unto the Arabs, the desert Arabs, the early Muslims. يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَسْلَمُوا لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيْهِ إِسْلَامَكُمْ so this is the religion of Allah and when Allah has guided you to this religion you have to be grateful and thankful and Allah also commands you so do not die except that you die as Muslims submission to the will for Rasulullah said in the meaning of the hadith Every Muslim will enter paradise except him who refuses. 
when he mentioned this, it's a very authentic hadith, very strange for the Sahaba. Surprisingly, and you hear a word from that from Rasulullah, every Muslim will enter paradise except him who refuses. He said, Woman ya ya Rasulullah. Who will refuse, O Messenger of Allah? In other words, which Muslim in his right sense will refuse to enter paradise? It's impossible. Which Muslim will refuse to enter paradise? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Allah has taught him the hikmah, the wisdom, and he knows how to answer. And whenever he talks, whenever he replies, he replies with wisdom, words of wisdom, diplomacy. He said, Man ata'ani dakhla jannah. He said, he who obeys me will enter paradise. Will enter paradise. And he who refuses to obey me, then he refuses. He who disobeys me, he's refusing. He who disobeys me, he's refusing. Rasulullah is inviting you. Calling you to the way. If you accept, it means you want to go to paradise. If you refuse, it means you don't want to go to paradise. Even if you say with your lips, I want to go to paradise. But he invites you and asks you to do certain things and you refuse. This is why he says, Man atani, man atani, dakhla jannah. Wa man asani fakat abba. He who obeys me will enter paradise. And he who disobeys me is refusing to enter paradise. So, ta'atu Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wajib. The obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is wajib, is obligatory, is necessary, is fard, absolutely necessary that we obey him. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in numerous places in the Quran, he says, Ya ayyu ladhina amanu, a'ti Allah wa a'ti Rasul. All those who believe, all believers, obey Allah and obey the messenger. And he also said, Wa man yutir Rasul, faqad a'ta Allah. Allah is saying, he who obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. He who obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. As if Allah has given Muhammad a blank check. Go spread this religion and tell the people to follow you. And he says, if you follow this man, you're obeying me. Because I am sending him as an ambassador, as a messenger, as a rasul, as a warner, a giver of glad tidings, as a teacher, an instructor, a da'i, inviting you to goodness. Obey this man. And if you refuse to obey him, that means you don't want to go to paradise. You don't want to go to paradise. Even if you say with your lips, I want to go. Allah is saying, who, who obeys this man is obeying me. So this is what religion is all about. Obedience to Allah and obedience to his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, whom we have to love. We always have to love Allah for the, for the life he has given us, for the good things he has given us, the air we breathe, the clothes we wear, the food we eat, the shelter. Of, of roof over our head <clears throat> and he gave us wives and offsprings and the amenities of life we have to love him he's our creator as believers we have to believe that all these things come from Allah he's the provider he's the sustainer he knows what we want and he gives to those whom he pleases much and to some he restricts by wisdom his wisdom. He knows why. He knows why he gives certain people lots of money, lots of wealth, and some he made poor. This is for testing you. It's a test from Allah, from Allah, a trial from Allah. He cannot make everybody rich. He doesn't want to make everybody rich. And they say that he doesn't make everybody poor. Allah is one have a way. So we do not question Allah when he chooses to give more to some unless the sum we submit always and we say sami'na wa atana we hear and we obey we follow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is what the religion of islam is all about to obey allah
and to obey his messenger. To obey Allah and to obey the messenger. To love Allah and to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this beautiful hadith, authentic hadith, he said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى تكون حب إليه بين ولده ووالده وناس يجمعين. None of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his own son, than his own father, and all mankind put together. In other words, we have to love Rasulullah more than we love our fathers, more than we love our mothers, more than we love our children, our daughters, our sons, more than we love all human beings. We have to love Rasulullah more. More. Why shouldn't we? When Allah loves this man, Allah loves this man. Allah has chosen this man. Allah sent him as a messenger. And Allah has brought him up from a little child, a baby, and took him up to the heavens to show him the wonders of his creation, to show him his paradise. And this is what I promise you and the people who follow you. Oh, gathering of Muslims. Don't think that this religion is a religion of story you call Nancy, Nancy tales or story tales fairy tales no it's true the Quran is true we just finished the month of Ramadan why you think we came here why you think we were flooding the mosque in Ramadan and making dua and fa because we believe in Allah we believe in what he promised us we believe in the Quran we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill his promise in Allah la yukhliful mi'ad from the Quran Allah does not go against his promise he will not promise you something and say no I'm not going to do it in Allah la yukhliful mi'ad he always fulfills his promises so we believe in that so we have before us a beautiful religion and we have to treat this religion you know really put it in our hearts and treat it with respect we have to know that this is our guidance. This is our passport, our entry to paradise. To obey Allah and to obey his messenger. And this is what religion is all about. We're here for a short time. A very short time. Whether you live to be 20 years or 40 years or 60 years or 80 years or maybe 100 years is a very, very short time compared to what Allah has for you in the hereafter. A hundred years in this world is like a second in the next world, a less, a millisecond. Because the next world, Allah is not going to make you live for a million years, or a billion years, or even a trillion years. Allah is saying, Khalidina fiha abadan abada. They will dwell therein forever and ever, without end. There's no limits in the next world. This is the Sunnah, this is the words of Allah. And this is the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's an everlasting paradise. There's no return. Nobody who went to this paradise want to return to this dunya for what they're seeing and enjoying. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us a glimpse of it. But he also said, "Fiha ma la ainun raat, wa la udhun samia, wa ma khatar al qalbi bashar." In it are things that eyes have never seen, ears have never heard about it, and it does not occur on the heart of man. And this is our paradise that we are striving for. There are descriptions in the Quran. There are descriptions in the Hadith. Beautiful descriptions of paradise. And this is what the religion is all about. All we have to do, make some sacrifices. Pray to Allah, obey Allah. Do the righteous deeds that Allah asks us to do. We make our five daily prayers. We fast in the month of Ramadan. We give our zakat and sadaqah, if you want to, voluntary. We make our hajj. We believe in the shahada. And we avoid the evil, avoid all the evil, fornication, adultery, stealing, lying, backbiting, murdering, raping. Avoid all the evil, all the forms of deception. So when you do the good deeds and avoid the evil, you become a man of righteousness. You're a person whom Allah will love. And when you become a beloved of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is an automatic entry into paradise. Because you will get your sins forgiven. You will ask for big dua and Allah will forgive you your sins. Because between every salah, as Rasulullah says, as salawat khams kafara lima Between one salah to another salah is a means of kafara, 
expiation of sins that comes between it. So you avoid the kabair, all the major sins you avoid, and do all the good things, and these prayers will take care of your small mistakes. This is from the, from the deen, this is from the religion. So this is indeed a wonderful religion, a beautiful religion. This is why Allah has chosen this religion, and He has completed this religion. This religion has no nuksan, it has no incompletion. I want you to know, when this religion, when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi left this world, this religion was fully completed 100%. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Arafah when the Prophet made his farewell hajj Allah revealed to him one of the verses that tells you that all the Sharia law has been concluded This day I mean the day of Arafah he tell Muhammad this day have I perfected for you your religion completed my favors in you and have chosen Islam as your religion. So it's a choice from Allah. He chose this religion for us and it's completed. So there's nothing to add. We don't need to add anything to religion that Allah has already perfected. It's a perfect religion, 100%. So how can you go and try to add something to this religion to make it more perfect? Impossible. It's already perfected. So when you try to add something, you're already corrupting the religion. You're not doing this religion any favor. You're corrupting it. So do not try to introduce in this religion what is not part of this religion. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has warned, Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa min fahuarad. Whoever brings into this religion that which is not part of this religion, it has to be rejected. This is Hadith Umar. It has to be rejected. Anyone who brings into this religion, in other words, innovates into this religion, what is not part of this religion, it has to be rejected. So we have a religion already perfected. It's between our hands from the glorious Quran and from the authentic hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is upon you now to follow. Follow the ways of Allah. Love Allah and love His Messenger. And hear what Allah says, O gathering of Muslims, regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is telling Muhammad, go and tell the people, this is my word, these are my words. If you claim you love Allah, O people, then follow me, Muhammad. I am the way. In return, Allah will love you and Allah will forgive you your sins. Allah will love you and Allah will forgive you your sins. What else can a Muslim hope for? That you become the beloved of Allah and you have your sins washed away. Definitely, inshallah, is paradise. And this is what religion is all about. Our lifestyle in this world will determine our entrance into the next world, how we enter. Whether we go to Jahannam or whether we go to Paradise. But a Muslim does not want to go to Jahannam. He wants to go to Paradise. This is why you exhort all your energies throughout the year. Not only Ramadan. Throughout the year. With your Salah, with your Zakat, with your charity and your good deeds. And you be nice to your family and your wives and your children and your neighbors. And you do not insult anyone. You do not use words of profanity. Words of embarrassment and insult. You do not use foul language. You guard your tongue against evil. And you celebrate the praises of your Lord. When you say, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Walla ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Subhanallah, Walbihamdi, Subhanallah, Azim. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yazalu li sana abdin ratban mi dhikrillah. That the tongue of a servant will continue to be moist and fresh at the remembrance of Allah. O oh, gathering of Muslims, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that your religion, Islam, is a religion of, is a unique religion, it's a beautiful religion, and it's the only religion that Allah will accept. Barakalawla fil Quran al Kareem, wa nafana wa yaku wal ayati wa dhikr al Hakim, akulu kawli hada, wa staqfir ala ala diwa liwa lakum, wa staqfiru, innahu huwa al Ghafur Rahim.
الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره وأشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد وقالوا يا مسلم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم one day he was met by Jibreel alayhi salam it's a long hadith and in the gist of it he met him and Jibreel asked him Ya Muhammad akhbirni ma islam Oh Muhammad tell me what is Islam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied Islam shahada to wa la ilaha illallah wa ni Rasulullah wa yikami salah wa yitai zakah wa sabar ramadhan wa hijjabayt ala al-haram man istata ilayhi sabila he gave him the five pillars the shahada, the salah, the zakah, the sawm and the hajj and in Jibreel alayhi salam told him you have spoken the truth, sadaqta. Then he asked him a second question. Ya Muhammad, akhbirni mal iman. Oh Muhammad, tell me what is iman? And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al-iman an tu'mina bilahi wa malaikati wa kutubi wa rusulih wa al-yawm al-akhir wa an tu'mina bil qadr khayri wa sharri. He gave him the six pillars of iman. To believe in Allah and his angels and his revealed books and his messengers, and the last day, and to believe in Qadr, the good of it and the evil of it. So there's a big difference between Islam and between Iman. Islam has five pillars, and Iman has six pillars from this very hadith. And they're not the same. And the early Arabs, the same desert Arabs, they used to believe that they are believers. Because they come into Islam, they believe they are believers. Mu'minun. So Allah revealed regarding them. Qalatil a'rabu amanna. Kul lam tu'minu. Walakin kulu aslamna. Walamma yadkhul iman fi kulubikum. The desert Arab say, we are believers. Allah said, no. Do not say we are believers. Say we are Muslims. For iman has not yet entered into your hearts. Iman has not yet entered your hearts. So, O gathering of Muslims, it is not sufficient that you are satisfied of just being Muslims. You need to go to the next stage of being mu'minun, believers, to be a mu'min, and not to be satisfied as a Muslim. A Muslim is an ordinary person who just followed the five pillars of Islam, and he enters into the fold of Islam. And a Muslim, even though he prays five times a day, he lies and he cheats and he steals and he commits adultery and he shoots people and kills people. He's still a Muslim. Because he prays five times a day and he declares the shahada. Still a Muslim. A believer doesn't do these things. A believer avoids the evil. All the major evils. And at the same time, he does all the good things Allah asks him to do. And these are the people that will be successful. As Allah says, God aflahal mu'minun, alladheena hum fi salatim khashi'oon. The believers will be successful. Those who when they make the salah, they have khushu'a. And Allah give a long list of the believers. The people who refrain from adultery and fornication, the people who obey Allah, the people who establish the salah, the people who do good things, all the things Allah mentioned about the believers, not about the Muslims. So, there's a big difference between the Islam and between the Iman, between the Muslim and between the Mu'min. And this comes from the Quran and from the Hadith, the authentic Hadith. So be believers, O gathering of Muslims. Elevate your status. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask Allah to put Iman in your hearts. Ask Allah to put the Iman in your heart and to get rid of the evil from your hearts. And don't forget to send salams upon Rasulullah, this great man who came to us with all his good news of the hereafter of paradise. We must not forget to send salams upon him for Allah himself. Allah himself is sending salutations and salams upon his great Nabi on a regular basis. And his angels are doing it too. When he says, Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi. And he commands you, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi 
wasallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ummati al-arba al-khulafa al-hunafa Abu Bakr Umar wa Uthman wa Ali wa an baqiyati ashabi nabiyyik ajma'in bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma izz al-islam al-muslimin Allahumma izz al-islam al-muslimin wa dhill ash-shirk al-mushrikin wa dammir a'da' din bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab zayyin qulubana bil iman allahumma zayyin qulubana bil iman wa karr ilayna al-kufra wal fusuq wal isyan rabbana dhalamna anfusana wa in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin allahumma alli bayna qulub al-mu'minin wa ijma'na ala kalimatika la ilaha illallah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in this world and in the next world and save us from the torment of the hellfire. And may He cause our hearts not to deviate from the straight path after He has guided us aright. And may He subhanahu wa ta'ala beautify our hearts with Iman. May He beautify our hearts with Iman and may He expel from our hearts all forms of disbelief and all forms of kufr and all forms of evil. And may He subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to send salams and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad and all those who follow in his way until the day of judgment. Ibadallah. Inna Allah ya'mud wal adl wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanhan al fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tathakkaroon fathkuru Allah al-azim al-jaleel yathkurkum wa shkuruhu wa la ni'amihi yazidkum wa la dhikru Allahi akbar wa Allahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un aqimu salam بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر